Crimson Rivers, Arena Aftermath. Sirius launches out of his chair the moment the doors open, demanding, Can I see them now? Are they... Mr. Black, the nurse says, holding up their hand in a soothing gesture. I just came to update you. Mr. Potter is still in surgery, but he's almost finished and he's expected to wake up tomorrow. He won't be recovered enough to be fully released for at least two more days. But he will recover, Sirius insists, because he's been here for fucking hours and no one has given him any answers. It leaves him restless and ready to riot. The nurse hesitates, then clears the throat. Mr. Potter will recover fully from the stab wound to his abdomen, but his leg unfortunately has severe enough nerve damage that he will be required to use a cane if he's going to be standing for long periods of time or moving great distances, especially when it's cold or he's doing anything strenuous. Of course, he will learn over time when the cane is necessary, as well as his pain tolerance, but we do believe he will need it frequently over the next two months, which means he'll need it during the Victor interview, sadly. The Hallow will provide it, I assure you. Sirius grinds his teeth, infuriated that the nurse thinks he gives one fuck about how James will look on that stage, over his health, as if how he's presented to the world matters more when Sirius couldn't care less. And Regulus? Sirius whispers, hands balling into fists. The nature in which he received his scars means they'll never heal completely, unfortunately. Retreating them so they will fade a bit, but not... I don't mean the fucking scars. Is he okay? He ingested quite a bit of blood from the river, the nurse informs him, which is when it hits Sirius that the river in the arena was actually made of blood. Just now he realizes this, and it makes him feel close to vomiting. Due to this, he'll be vomiting quite a bit through the night and will likely suffer intense abdominal pain until tomorrow, at the very least. We're flushing his system with fluids and medicine to fight any bacteria or infection, which will help. Anything else? Sirius demands. Due to the nature in which he received his injuries, the scars will always remain, but they should be faded before the interview, and easily covered by makeup, the nurse says, as if that's going to comfort him, as if Sirius even cares. Clearly, seeing that this is not helpful, the nurse tries again. He'll be released tomorrow, if all goes well, but we'll be holding Mr. Potter for an extra day to have a specialist come in and work with him on what he should expect with his leg. Sirius exhales shakily. Is, is my brother awake? Yes, he is, the nurse confirms gently. Can I see him? Sirius chokes. The nurse's face softens. Of course, follow me, Mr. Black. Thank you, Sirius breathes his shoulders slumping as he surges forward to follow the nurse through the doors. I don't want you to be alarmed, is the warning Sirius gets as they move through the clinically white hall, taking a corner and stopping at a closed door. The nurse glances back at him, lips tipped down. His scarring is quite extensive. Sirius just nods, his hands trembling as he tries to regulate his breathing, starkly aware that his baby brother is on the other side of the door. He's begging his memory not to fail him now, because he wants to be here for this. He needs to be here. The door opens with a creak, and the nurse steps aside to allow him in, carefully shutting the door behind him as soon as he steps inside, leaving Sirius alone with... Oh. Sirius doesn't mean to, but he sucks in a sharp breath, his heart sinking right to his feet. Regulus is there, on the bed, looking so small, his head turned away. There's an IV in his arm a few other cords hooked up to him for his vitals and such, and he's in a gown, leaving his legs bare to his knees and his arms bare right up, bare up to right above his elbows. The nurse wasn't lying. Regulus has scars all over his arms and legs, dragging down in harsh red arcs like there are still claws yanking at him. They're closed but still healing, leaving them fresh and stark against his pale skin. Every group of scars comes in four or five, making it clear that hands did this to him. And they're not thin like the lines on Remus's back, nor do they layer and crisscross over each other. Where the gown slips down over Regulus's shoulder, Sirius can see scars slashed over the hill of his collarbone and towards his back. It disappears beneath the cloth, but Sirius is quite sure that his back and chest are suffering the same fate. 
At the sound of Sirius's inhale, Regulus's head rolls to the side, his eyes unsettlingly dull, and there, on the other side of his face, the left side, there are scars starting right at the bolt of his jaw and curving down the side of his neck. They're not as deep, not as stark, but the sight of them still makes Sirius' stomach lurch. Regulus was being ripped apart in that river. Regulus clearly wasn't expecting it to be Sirius coming in, because the blank void of his eyes shifts as soon as it seems to hit him that Sirius is there. It takes maybe all of five seconds for those eyes to fill with tears and then Sirius is moving. Regulus is already rising up from his bed by the time Sirius reaches him, and he should be gentle with him. He wants to be careful, but he just... He has to get his arms around him. He has to hold on to him and know that he's here. Make sure he's alive and here where Sirius is. Regulus doesn't seem to care about being treated tenderly because he practically molds himself into Sirius's arms with a horrible, choked sob. Sirius shudders out a harsh breath and tips his face down into Regulus's hair, squeezing his eyes shut because they're stinging. He clings to his little brother for a long moment and just breathes. And it feels like he can breathe for the first time since Regulus walked away from him to enter the arena. A bolt of energy bordering on desperation zings down Sirius's spine, and his hands fling up to frame Regulus's face and ears and hair as he snatches back and looks down at him, waiting for Regulus's watery eyes to meet his before speaking. Listen to me, okay, Regulus? Sirius says firmly. I love you. You're my brother. Of course I love you. Always have, always will, and nothing, absolutely nothing in this world could ever change that. Do you hear me? You're enough for me, and I love you. Never, never fucking doubt that. Regulus stares up at him for a moment, before promptly bursting into tears all over again, his whole body deflating like a pop balloon. He ducks his head forward and presses the top of it to Sirius's chest like he's five instead of twenty-five, hiding away from the world. Sirius loosens his arms a bit in case he's actually hurting him, but gently scrubs his hand back and forth over Regulus's head. For a long time, neither of them move. Regulus eventually stops crying, his heaving shoulders just dropping. Sirius feels like a weight has just lifted off his chest, which is ironic because the top of Regulus's head is still resting there, but that's neither here nor there. The important thing is, Sirius has told Regulus that he loves him, because he didn't get to before, and he's so grateful that he gets the chance to now. Sirius doesn't need Regulus to say it back, he knows. Just from all that happened between Regulus asking Remus to take care of him, and Regulus admitting to Evan that he missed him, and Regulus begging James to live for him, yeah, Sirius knows. Even now, just this... The way Regulus leans into him like Sirius is his port in a storm, a shelter to crawl into for safety when the winds grow too harsh. The way just hearing that Sirius loves him is enough to make him weep so deeply, so wholeheartedly, that the touch of grief is almost worth it. Regulus doesn't say it back, but Sirius hears it anyway. Hears it in all the ways it's said without words, and always has been for years even wrapped in pain and anger. Sirius doesn't expect Regulus to say it back, because he's Regulus, and he always struggled to say such things, even long before all of this. Sirius has the same issue at times, likely from the way they grew up, but he's had something that Regulus purposefully distanced himself from, James Potter's influence. So Sirius can say it, and Regulus doesn't have to. What matters is that Sirius hears the response loud and clear, echoing over the distance. After all this time they spent unable to meet halfway, he hears it. He knows. Regulus abruptly goes stiff against him, and to his credit, he does try to rock back in enough time, but he doesn't quite manage it before he's vomiting up copious and alarming amounts of blood right on Sirius's shirt. He curls over and nearly falls to the floor, his body heaving, and Sirius frantically dives for the pan on the stand by the bed, holding it under Regulus's head and making sure he doesn't fall. It's violent. Regulus shakes and shudders through it, gasping and choking, and Sirius tries not to freak the fuck out, but watching someone you love throw up literal blood isn't really cohesive with serenity. Okay, okay, hey, just breathe. 
Sirius blurts out, pushing Regulus's hair back from his face as he shakes, only to quickly drop his hair again when he sees how bad Regulus looks. It leaves him red from strain, face swollen, blood dribbling from his mouth, and tears streaming down his face. Regulus's body seizes again, curling forward, and Sirius grimaces as he rubs between Regulus's shoulders. He doesn't know if that helps, but he keeps doing it anyway, just in case it does. There's another round of vomit that leaves Regulus, groaning and clutching weakly at Sirius's arm where he's holding the pan for him. The smell of iron is thick in the air. Finally, the brief moment of sickness seems to subside, at least for now, and Regulus pants as he rocks back, trembling all over. He looks like shit, quite frankly. Not that Sirius would ever tell him this. It doesn't seem proper to mention it. Sorry, Regulus rasps his voice hoarse and soft like it hurts to talk, which, after all that, it likely does. Regulus stares at Sirius's shirt, looking miserable. I'm sorry, I... What, this? Sirius huffs out a forced laugh and very pointedly doesn't look down at where he's currently covered in hot, sticky blood that his brother just projectile vomited on him. That's the stuff of nightmares, frankly, and so he would like to not see it, thank you. Not my first time being covered in blood. It's fine. I didn't even like the shirt. Sirius really liked the shirt. Regulus continues to look miserable, and also like he's in pain, so Sirius swats away his ridiculous thoughts, realizing that he's absurdly nervous, and sits the pan aside to move over and grab a wet wipe from the pack sitting on the stand, then takes a paper cup on it and fills it up with water from the small basin in the corner. Here, wipe your mouth and rinse it, Sirius murmurs, holding up the wipe first. Regulus reaches out to grab it and immediately drops it. His hands are shaking too hard, far too unsteady. He tries. It's very obvious how hard he's trying, but he can't manage to hold on to the wipe, so it repeatedly falls from his hand to land in his lap. He makes a noise of frustration, something quiet and fussy, like he's on the brink of a fucking breakdown. Fuck! Regulus croaks, sounding dangerously close to tears, and Sirius knows this. He knows how hard this is, how close to falling apart one feels when they make it out alive. You do make it out alive, but that doesn't make living easy. Okay, just... Sirius clears his throat and reaches out to smack the wipe, flicking Regulus on the end of his nose, upwards to get him to look up. The moment Regulus does, Sirius quite literally wipes his entire face with no finesse, as quickly as possible, because he knows Regulus is going to... That. He's going to do that. Regulus sputters and flinches back in disbelief, looking downright appalled that Sirius is wiping his face like he's a fucking toddler. Regulus may not like it, but when needs must and all that, he'll just have to deal. Sirius, Regulus hisses. I don't need you to... Shut up. Sirius interrupts, holding out the cup as he balls the pink-tinged wipe in his hand. Rinse and spit. Regulus scowls at him. Fuck off, I'm not an infant. Rinse and spit, Reggie, or I'll waterboard you under that tap. Sirius tells him, eyebrows raised. I hope I vomit on you again. Regulus grumbles, but he dutifully takes the cup in his shaking hand and manages to down it, gurgling before spitting it back in the cup. Like the wipe, it's tinged with pink. Sirius tosses the wife into the bin, then takes the cup and pan to the basin to clean them. As he does, he keeps talking to Regulus, speaking over the running water. Wouldn't be the first time, and I'm not talking about this time either. I have a memory of you showing up at the foot of my bed. You had to have been either five or six, and you told me you weren't feeling well approximately three seconds before you vomited all over me and my bed then started crying. Is that, did that actually happen, or is my brain making things up again? No, that actually happened, Regulus confirms grudgingly, and Sirius can't help but smile a bit, because he didn't lie. The memory is fuzzy and real, and it fills him with a fondness he's happy to let flood him right now. After shutting off the tap, Sirius carefully eases out of his coat, which thankfully is blood-free, and he peels his shirt off to ball up and toss in the bin as well. Following that, he cleans off the damp spot of blood that soaked through his shirt, then puts his coat on and zips it up. 
When he turns around, Regulus is still sitting on the side of his bed, hands braced on the edge of it. Well, not much difference in all the years in between, I suppose, Sirius says softly, despite the fact that it's the boldest lie he's ever told. All the years in between have made all the difference in the world, and yet here they are. Regulus lowers his gaze. I'd say vomiting blood is a key difference. His throat visibly lobs. Did they tell you why? It's because I ingested so much blood in the arena. They told me, Sirius admits. I swallowed so much blood, Regulus whispers, his gaze distant, something chilling and tragic in the lines of his face. The whole time I was just swallowing blood. Regulus, Sirius calls quietly, cautiously, his chest feeling tight because it's quite obvious that Regulus is not okay. Which, yeah, he wouldn't be, but this is... I couldn't breathe, Regulus rasps, lifting his gaze to look at Sirius as if he's not even seeing him. I had to swallow it, to breathe. That's all I was doing the entire time. I couldn't breathe, Sirius. And it's still... It's in me. It's still... Okay, hey, Sirius blurts out, moving forward to crouch down in front of Regulus. It's not... It won't always be, he halts, swallowing harshly, feeling like a liar because it will. It doesn't matter if Regulus' body rejects every drop of blood he swallowed down. He'll never get rid of the taste. He'll never forget choking on it. Sirius wishes he could tell him that it will get better, get easier, but that's simply not true. And it's not fair that Sirius can't even comfort Regulus right now, not without lying. All he can say is, you're getting it out, Reggie. Should be gone by morning, all of it. And, and you're breathing now, yeah? You can breathe now. They told me I'm a victor, but I should be dead, Regulus announces with a startling steadiness to his tone, and Sirius flinches instinctively at the words. I don't trust them. You have to... I need you to tell me if... You got out, Sirius cuts in instantly, because he knows this, too. He knows the surreality of actually making it. He knows how hard it is to believe. You're here. Okay, Regulus croaks deflating a bit more, trusting him instantly, which makes Sirius feel like he could fucking cry. There's a pause. Then Regulus glances down at his legs, specifically the scars on them. I... I thought it made sense, because why would I have the scars if I was dead? Don't worry about them, Sirius tells him, shaking his head when Regulus glances up again. Not now. Not today. You don't have to think about them right now, okay? I've never seen your scars. Regulus says quietly. I knew you had them, of course, but I never... Well, I don't make it a habit of getting undressed in front of you, do I? Sirius mutters, but he knows what Regulus means. It's just another way that Sirius never opened up and let Regulus in after his time in the arena. Sirius would have ripped his skin off before showing Regulus the scars he bore for him. Scars he volunteered to have so that Regulus wouldn't. And now, Regulus bears scars of his own. Yes, well, if it was a competition, I feel compelled to point out that I'm winning by an unfortunately large margin, Regulus grumbles, cringing as he tips himself to the side, trying to get back onto the bed. The way his mood swings from concerning to seemingly stable reminds Sirius of himself. I know, which is terribly upsetting, frankly. There is nothing more distressing than knowing your little brother looks cooler than you, Sirius murmurs moving over to help ease Regulus down, because he's clearly struggling. Regulus seems too exhausted to really fight the assistance, and he slumps down with a watery sigh, curled up on his side. It takes him a second, then his gaze slides up to lock on Sirius as he whispers, James? Sirius wonders how long he was working up to that. He got out too, Sirius says softly. He's alive. They're working on him in surgery for his leg. As nice as the medicine was, it couldn't fix everything, so he has nerve damage severe enough that he'll need a cane, but he's okay, Regulus. He should be awake tomorrow. Regulus's eyes sink shut, his fingers curling into the sheet beneath him. He's like a marionette with all his strings cut at once, slumping into the bed as he releases a deep exhale. Okay, he says, not opening his eyes. Sirius moves across the room to grab the chair from the corner, bringing it to the side of the bed so he can sit down. 
and Regulus's eyes flutter open to look at him. How? They... they changed the rule. They... James, Sirius cuts in, a lump forming in his throat. The mere memory makes his skin crawl. He... well, he essentially said either both of you were making it home or neither of you were. He refused to leave that arena without you. But I... I handcuffed him to the pole, Regulus says, his voice ridiculously small and oddly betrayed. He didn't... He couldn't have done anything. I made sure of it. He had no weapons, couldn't reach any, and he was bleeding out, for fuck's sake. Sirius heaves a sigh. The venom from the Horcrux hornet that James kept after Vanity died, it was still in his pocket. He was going to drink it. He would have been dead before they could have reached him. Why would he do that? Regulus chokes out, his chest heaving on a deep, shuddering breath. Because he loves you, Sirius says quietly. Regulus seems to gag on a harsh inhale, then tips himself forward and proceeds to vomit up blood right into the pan that Sirius actually manages to shove under his face in time. It's as violent and awful as it was before, and again Sirius rubs in between Regulus's shoulders, carefully in what he hopes is a soothing gesture. Just like last time, Regulus shakes and sobs through it, and this time he doesn't stop when it's over, he just continues to fall apart. He doesn't even protest when Sirius cleans his face for him again, just lying there limply and crying silently, which is somehow worse than weeping where he can be heard. He rinses and spits again when Sirius urges him to, then stares up at the ceiling for a long time without saying a word. When Regulus does speak again, his voice is hoarse and brittle as he says, Will you stay with me? I'm not going anywhere, Sirius replies firmly reaching out to lay his hand on Regulus's arm, careful not to press too hard on his scars. Regulus looks over at him, his eyes bright with a sheen of tears he's clearly fighting valiantly not to let fall. Sirius nods at him reassuringly, I promise. That vow seems to be the final blow that takes all the fight out of Regulus, and the tears tip right over the edge. He closes his eyes and cries and cries and cries. Remus feels strange without Sirius around. He's been gone all day, literally, from the moment James and Regulus were announced victors. It's getting close to evening now, and Remus will have to go to his cell soon. He has spent the entire day stress-cleaning quite literally everything. He can't stop worrying about Regulus and James, as well as Sirius, and that leaves him restless. Everything had happened so quickly— a sequence of events that took place so rapidly that it was hard to follow. There was Sirius losing it because James was dying, then losing it because Regulus was, then left reeling for a long moment when they both survived. All of that had happened in less than ten minutes, and frankly, Remus was just as fucking stunned by the emotional upheaval it all caused as Sirius was. Then, less than five minutes after the victor banners played on the screen, Sirius was picking himself up in a desperate scramble to go to the infirmary. It's not that Remus isn't used to spending a good portion of his day without Sirius. It's just that Sirius is usually back by now. And Remus really just wants to know that everything is okay. He has this churning anxiety in the pit of his stomach, making it hard to focus, and he just... He wants to know something before he goes back to his cell tonight. The sound of the door opening makes him look up, fully expecting Sirius, because the only people who can get into the suites are those who actually stay in the suites, but it turns out to be Pandora. She also technically stays in the suite, so he supposes he shouldn't be surprised, but he, well, all right, deep down he was hoping it was Sirius. Oh, darling, you look stressed, Pandora says gently her face softening as she moves over and holds out her hand to him. Remus takes it after only one beat of hesitation. He's still not very used to physical contact with anyone who isn't serious, but he's not opposed to it when it's Pandora. While watching the games together, they've instinctively reached out to each other in moments of distress, even embraced when celebrating, so in a wild turn of events Remus didn't see coming, it's Pandora he's most comfortable with after Sirius at this point. Have you seen them? Sirius asks, unable to keep the hope out of his voice, settling down when Pandora leads them over to their seats where they sit side by side. 
James won't wake up until tomorrow, Pandora murmured. He needed surgery for his leg, so he's still recovering, and they won't allow visitors just yet. Regulus is awake, or he was, so Sirius is with him now. I didn't go in. Sirius wasn't sure if Regulus would want anyone to see him, and he was sleeping, so he couldn't say. But Sirius did come out to speak to me. Remus instantly feels some tension drain out of his shoulders, blowing out a deep breath as he nods. What did he say? He's staying overnight with Regulus, and will likely spend most of the day between him and James tomorrow. Regulus will be released tomorrow, but James won't be released until the following day. Sirius won't be returning until he brings Regulus here, so he asked that I would come and let you know that they were both alive and recovering, and he was also doing all right, and that he'd see you tomorrow, Pandora explains. Okay, Remus breathes out, finally feeling better. Also wildly grateful that Sirius, in the midst of everything, thought about him and his feelings enough to actually send someone to give him answers. Sirius is so fucking considerate. I have to bring him some clothes to change into. Apparently, there was an incident that made him lose his shirt. Pandora shrugs when Remus blinks at her. Don't ask, he wouldn't give me any details. All he said was that you might like to choose for him, so if you want... Oh, Remus mumbles, admittedly startled when she stands up and holds her hand out to him again. After a brief pause, he reaches out to take it, letting her pull him to his feet, dropping his hand as they start towards Sirius's room. Was he all right? I mean, did he seem okay? As okay as he could be, considering everything. I think getting to be with Regulus has helped him, and I'm sure seeing James tomorrow will as well, Pandora murmurs as they push inside, heading right for the closet. Unfortunately, that's not the end of everything. There is still the final interview. Right, Rima says. Do we have a schedule for that? I know it's different every year, depending on how much recovery time the victors need, but did Sirius say? They haven't confirmed it yet, but the Hallow, as a whole, is very eager to see James and Regulus again, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's the day after they're released, Pandora replies, as she sweeps into the closet. Remus falters a moment in the doorway behind her, a lump forming in his throat that he feels incredibly guilty about. He knows that James and Regulus, and even Sirius, will feel more at peace at home, but he can't stop himself from thinking about what happens when they do leave. Back to wearing his mask full-time, days and days on end in his cell back in Azkaban, only granted time away when he's out on assignments, if he's assigned to any events or parties at all. No talking, no freedom, no Sirius. Swallowing harshly, Remus pushes it from his mind, refusing to think about it. Not yet. Not now. He knows it's coming, but he's not ready, so he ignores it. Taking a deep breath, he goes inside to pick Sirius's clothes. Sirius doesn't get much sleep. This isn't very new, honestly, not since Regulus and James's names were called, but it's much worse this time. He stays up all night, repeatedly taking care of Regulus as he vomits up blood until he can't even speak, waking up from nightmares that have him lashing out. It's a bad night. Regulus spends most of it vomiting, in pain, and delirious from all of that and nightmares. He asks for James no less than fifteen times, and he hits Sirius in the face completely by accident at least twice, just flailing and trying to get away while Sirius tries to calm him down. He's a sweaty, bloody mess, honestly. Sirius cleans his face when he's too tired, soothes him when he's too out of it to realize he's not still in the arena, and manages two hours of sleep altogether, in total. It's exhausting, but Sirius does it anyway. By morning, Regulus is practically non-verbal, mostly communicating in one-word answers or just not acknowledging anything anyone says to him at all, not even Sirius. He doesn't cry anymore. He doesn't ask for James. He just lays there, staring off into the distance with dead eyes. It's deeply unsettling, as well as concerning, but it's not completely unexpected. Sirius had hoped this would happen, but this wouldn't happen, but it doesn't surprise him that it has. 
after getting back, there is a grace period where everything that you went through doesn't fully hit you. Sirius knows this well. Your brain literally can't make sense of it all, especially when there's so much else going on. Being in the infirmary, dealing with nurses and injuries and pain, realizing you actually survived. But then, eventually, it all catches up to you, bearing down on you like this weight you'll never be free from again. And you won't. Not ever. Because the only thing that happens is that you just learn to carry it. All of it settles in your mind, in your bones, in your nightmares. It consumes your every waking thought, until there is no escape. Sirius can't erase what happened to Regulus or James. He can't fix the suffering they endured, or the suffering they will continue to endure. He can only be here for them, and take care of them, and so that's what he intends to do. While Regulus is blatantly doing worse mentally and emotionally, he's doing much better physically by the time the sun rises the following day. The nurses repeatedly treat his scars throughout the night, and though they'll never fully fade, they've gotten better. They've shrunk, getting a little bit thinner, and they're no longer an angry red, but a soft pink. Time is the only thing that can take them from that to opaque white lines. The vomiting has also stopped, thankfully, and he seems to be in less pain. When he's cleared for a shower, he just doesn't get out of bed. They tell him that he can, and he doesn't move. Regulus, Sirius says quietly, Come on, have a shower, yeah? It'll make you feel more human, I promise. Regulus just looks at him blankly, as if he's not sure he'll feel even close to human ever again. This is going to be really embarrassing for both of us if I have to pick you up and carry you into the shower, Sirius warns, his voice strained. He so desperately hopes that Regulus's distaste for any form of vulnerability will cause a spark within him, but it doesn't. Regulus doesn't even twitch. Sirius leans forward to reach for Regulus, genuinely planning to help him up if he has to, but Regulus catches his wrist and says, No. You'll feel better. Sirius whispers, feeling helpless. The water. Regulus croaks. And there is something in his eyes now. Something that breaks Sirius's fucking heart. Fear. Don't make me get into the water. Okay, Reggie. That's okay. Sirius murmurs, his heart sinking as he settles back in his chair. He stumped, honestly. He isn't sure what the fuck to do in this situation, because Regulus will have no choice but to come in contact with water at some point. He'll have to get clean before his interviews, for one thing. Maybe he just needs more time. Regulus lets him go and returns to staring at the ceiling. A few more hours pass from early morning to mid-morning, and then there's a knock at the door. Sirius gets up to see who it is, relieved when he finds Pandora on the other side. How is he? Pandora asks. Been better, Sirius mumbles. I don't... I'd say come in, but I don't think that's a good idea. At least not now. He's being released this afternoon, though. Pandora nods. That's fine. I just wanted to check. I think I'm going to stay with... Stay in the suite. She gives him a significant look that he reads easily. They've been speaking entirely in code and unfinished sentences about Remus since the previous day. Heard anything about James? Nothing yet, Sirius says. I'll update you when I get back. Is the suite all right? Yeah, but I think it's better if I'm there, Pandora replies, which basically translates to Remus won't be alone. You're a gem, Sirius informs her, and she cracks a weak smile. He reaches out to pull her into a hug, and for a moment they just hold on to each other. And you, Pandora whispers as they break apart. She searches his face. How are you? I'll be all right, is all Sirius can bring himself to say. And she sighs as she squeezes his hand. He squeezes back. Pandora doesn't stay for much longer, so Sirius goes back into the room with Regulus, who hasn't moved an inch. He's so still and quiet that Sirius has to repeatedly stare at his chest to make sure he's still breathing. He's doing just that when a nurse comes in to tell him that James is awake. That gets a reaction out of Regulus. Not much of one, honestly, but he does turn his head to look at them. 
The nurse wants to show him to James's room, but Sirius hesitates. I'm coming back, Sirius tells Regulus, needing to make sure that he knows that. I have to come back anyway when you're released, all right? I can, I mean, maybe I can bring James over to visit you, so you two, no, Regulus cuts in, and again there's fear in his eyes. He seems to shrink into the bed. Sirius frowns. I'm sure they have a wheelchair I can bring him over in. Is that... He glances at the nurse. Can we do that? Can we make that happen? Yes, it shouldn't be a problem, the nurse assures him. No, Regulus bursts out, louder and more animated than he's been this entire time. It makes Sirius jump and stare at him with wide eyes, genuinely caught off guard. Regulus has his sheets clenched in his hands, and he's as pale as a ghost, shaking his head fervently. No, don't bring him here, Sirius. I don't want to see him. You were just asking for him last night, Sirius points out, so startled by this response, not sure what to make of it. I don't care. I don't want him here. I don't want to see him. Get out. Regulus chants, his voice a stilted rush of panic and anger, all mixed together, defensive and lashing out like he did when he was having nightmares. Go, just, just go to him and leave me alone. Don't bring him here. Okay, hey, I won't, Sirius says quickly, raising his hands like he's soothing a wild animal, which agitates him as soon as he's done it, because he's always hated it when people did it to him. He drops his hands and exhales slowly. I won't bring him, Regulus, I promise. And I'll go, that's fine, but I'm coming back. Just get some rest, yeah? As soon as Sirius makes it clear that he's going to comply with his wishes, Regulus relaxes again. Or, well, he sort of just deflates and goes limp, like someone abruptly unplugged him. He returns to that unnerving silence and stillness, turning his head once more to stare at nothing. Sirius tells Regulus twice more that he's coming back, which gets no response, and then he lets the nurse lead him out the room. James isn't very far at all, only three doors down, which honestly soothes Sirius more than he could ever say. Well, it does until he hears muffled shouting from within James's room, and he's bursting in before the nurse can even open the door. James is apparently giving the nurses trouble. There are three surrounding his bed, trying to hold him down, loudly pleading with him to calm down and take it easy. He's still healing, but he's just blatantly not listening to them. They must read as some sort of threat to him, or maybe he's just belligerent from confusion, because he's responding like they're trying to fucking kill him. He's shouting his head off, not making much sense, and despite his injuries, he's lashing out with all limbs and actually making progress, almost out of the bed entirely. Despite the fact that Sirius knows they're just trying to keep James from hurting himself further, he reacts like they're a threat too. Not even meaning to, he just responds, surging forward to yank the tallest man back, clearly the strongest. He has him flat on his back in seconds, boot pressed to his throat as he swivels his head to glare at the other nurses. Let him go, or I'll stomp this man's windpipe to dust. Back the fuck off, Sirius snaps, and the silence that rings after is somehow louder than the yelling from before. The other nurses step away slowly, which may have something to do with the fact that James has sunk back into the bed, staring up at Sirius like he's some sort of divine entity he never thought would come to bless him. The man on the floor whimpers and Sirius removes his boot carelessly, focusing on James entirely as he shifts closer to the bed. Sirius? James whispers, sounding downright breathless. It's me. You're fine. Sirius whispers back, approaching the bed with none of the wariness the other nurses seem to have. They're all shuffling back, even the man from the floor, who has gotten up and swiftly gotten out of range. Carefully, Sirius perches on the edge of James's bed. Relax, James. What's all the fuss about? Tell me and I'll fix it. Regulus, James says instantly, and there's this razor-sharp edge to his voice that seems to put everyone else on pins and needles, but only makes Sirius's heart clench. They won't let me see him. I don't... I need to see if... They said he was all right, but I... I just need to... He's alive, Sirius assures him, because he gets it. James doesn't trust these people any more than Regulus does, 
any more than Sirius did when it was him coming out of the arena. I promise he's alive. I was just with him. James chokes out a harsh breath, finally slumping back against the bed like all the fight has gone out of him at once. Only for it to flood right back in. He surges up and asks, Can I see him? Just, just to, I just need to see that he's okay. He's resting, Sirius murmurs, taking a deep breath and slowly letting it out. Oh, this is hard. He'd love nothing more than to take James three rooms over and put him at ease, but that's not what Regulus wants. You'll see him tomorrow when you're released, all right? For now, you're both healing. But trust me, he's alive. Tomorrow? James says warily. Like he's not sure if tomorrow even exists. And, yeah, Sirius knows what that's like, too. I promise, Sirius tells him, reaching out to gently push James back down to the bed by his shoulder. Just breathe. You're still on the mend. Yeah, ow. James mumbles, blinking rapidly as he slumps again. This time, like, he's exhausted. The adrenaline wearing off, no doubt. Letting his pain catch up to him. He reaches up to fumble for Sirius's wrist, then seems startled when he actually wraps his fingers around it. He gives a gentle squeeze, staring and staring at where they overlap. And then he looks up at Sirius with wide, watery eyes. Oh, I've missed you. Sirius chokes out a laugh, fighting valiantly not to break down into tears, and James gives him a weak grin, even as the tears spill from his eyes. James shifts a little, tightening his grip on Sirius's wrist, then fully just yanks him down. They sort of fall into each other, embracing and laughing through tears. Sirius can't decide if this is the best he's ever felt, or the worst. He thought, for a bit there, he really thought he'd never get this again. Never see his friend again. Never hug him, speak to him, simply exist with him. The relief is overwhelming, and it still can't erase all the fear and pain that came from nearly losing James. At some point, James is just weeping and clinging to him, and he's bigger than Sirius, though not by much, but he still feels so incredibly small and fragile at this moment. Delicate, almost. Sirius feels like he's cradling him, and nothing short of death could rip him away when James needs him. He'll hold on to him forever, if that's what it takes. James quite literally buries his face into Sirius's hair and refuses to budge an inch, even when his sobs turn soft and quiet, then eventually stop. He's just breathing, as well as keeping Sirius awkwardly slumped over him on the bed, arms linked around his back like they're made of steel. Mr. Black, says one of the nurses, sounding wary. We really do need to check Mr. Potter's wounds. Is, is that all right? Why are they still here? James mutters, sounding rather agitated, which Sirius understands. He would also like for the other people to stop existing right now. Can't they see this is a very important moment between two best friends? Sirius heaves a sigh. They'll go away once they check you over. It'll be quick, and I'll be here the whole time. Fine, James grumbles, but he dutifully lets go, allowing Sirius to straighten up and shift to the side. He watches with his arms crossed as the nurses come to examine James, excluding the one Sirius possibly unfairly assaulted, who apparently left the room at some point. They're still wary, and Sirius, glaring at every move they make, doesn't seem to help their nerves, but he can't bring himself to care. It clearly soothes James to know that he's there, being on guard, which works out because Sirius can't really help it anyway. One nurse works on removing the wrap around James's stomach, where he was stabbed, because the medicine did the job of healing it as much as it ever will. All that's left is time which will make it fade but never erase entirely. Sirius doesn't know whether to be amazed or baffled by the fact that James was stabbed in the exact spot as Sirius was when he was 16. They quite literally have matching scars now, even if they look different. The scar on James's leg is also healed, but he has an additional one on the outside of his thigh, all the way down to his knee from the surgery. The two points where the hook pierced him look like scars the size of coins, matching on each side. The skin nodded and raised. 
the only other scar james has is the faded lines from where the bear trap went into his leg so faint and small that they're barely even noticeable hey we match james says softly while poking idly around the scar on his stomach grimacing every time he does it yeah and take it from me prodding it while it's still healing isn't the smartest idea sirius replies reaching out to grab james's hand and tug it away james keeps holding on so sirius doesn't let go i didn't feel it when it went in james tells him his voice quiet and pensive there is a faraway look in his eyes that makes sirius a stomach twist hard thing to miss being stabbed and yet i still i didn't really feel it either sirius offers it's the adrenaline and with so much going on james swallows his gaze unfocused yeah did they tell you about your leg sirius asks desperate to get that haunted look out of james's eyes at this point hmm? james blinks and looks over at him about needing a cane oh yeah they yeah it's i mean it's fine i suppose i'll get used to it sirius feels his chest go tight at the resignation in james's voice just quiet acceptance in his tone like he's not even allowing himself to be upset about it about how unfair it is that he's suffering this at the result of something he should have never had to deal with or go through nothing about this is fine and just hearing james say it makes sirius so angry that he has to take a steadying breath to remain calm that's what james needs right now a soothing presence they're both quiet as the nurses finish up then quickly leave without instructions for james to remain in what with instructions for james to remain in bed as soon as they're gone james tugs on sirius's hand urging him to climb in next to him without even saying a word sirius doesn't deny him equally as desperate to be close as james is it takes a bit of maneuvering but they eventually settle on the bed together james can't really lie on his side but sirius does it for him curled up against him as they just breathe in perfect sync in and out together as one i'm so tired james whispers me too sirius confesses it's not over is it james asks softly sirius shifts back to look at james who turns his head to stare at him with his eyebrows furrowed no not yet you won't be released until tomorrow and then there will be the interview you and regulus will have to do together it's it's hard james i know but you don't think about that right now yeah i'd rather think about what's coming than think about what already happened james croaks blinking lavender okay sirius says instantly well regulus gets released today so i'll have to take him back to the suite but i'll come back and stay the night with you and then stay until you're released too i haven't gotten confirmation on when the interview will be taking place but these things generally happen quickly while things are still fresh after the interviews we'll stay one last night and then leave the following morning so less than a week james checks sirius hums less than a week probably and then you're home james it's almost he halts because he was about to say it's almost over but they both know it's not that simple james is silent he doesn't respond for a long time just breathing sirius lays there and lets james fiddle with his fingers a restless motion that speaks of anxiety he doesn't know how to soothe it other than letting james play with his hand pinching the knuckles gently and moving his fingers at will with no resistance sirius wouldn't resist anyway if he thought it would help he'd cut his hand off and give it to james like a fucking stress ball thank you james croaks suddenly for what sirius asks a touch incredulous as he tips his head back to look at james unable to fathom what he could possibly be thanking sirius for when he didn't do anything james swallows for what you said before i went into the arena i i needed to hear it i thought about it a lot and i think it was one of the only things that made everything seem more bearable so thank you oh sirius whispers dropping his gaze immediately as a lump forms in his throat shame curdling in his gut he doesn't know what he said he can't remember 
something important to James that helped him, and Sirius wasn't even fucking there for it. Sirius? James mumbles. Taking a deep breath, Sirius lifts his gaze and bites the bullet, giving James a bitter smile. I, um, I don't, I can't remember what I said. I'm sorry, James. What did I say? Ah, James says softly, his eyes sad. You, you lost that, didn't you? Our last moments? Yeah, Sirius admits. Oh, Sirius, I'm, I'm so sorry, James rasps, tangling their fingers together, squeezing them. Even now, even here, James is still trying to take care of everyone else. What did I say? Sirius insists. Because he's not standing for it. He remembers what James said in the arena, what he told Regulus about how he takes care of others to avoid the fact that he needs to be taken care of too. Sirius isn't going to let that happen, not again. Not when he's here to stop it. Well, you told me you loved me, James murmurs, and Sirius feels something in his chest shrivel up and crumble when he processes that. Because he told James he loved him. He told James even when he wasn't himself. But he couldn't figure out how to say it to Regulus. And it doesn't matter that he's said it now, because he didn't say it then. And Regulus almost died. He could be dead never knowing, and Sirius, oh, he would have never forgiven himself. I, well, you don't remember, but I said it back. But you also, you told me. What? Sirius demands, a little harsh, because he's still upset with himself, unable to let it go. James exhales shakily. I forgive you. That's what you said. You forgave me for leaving you. Sirius's breath punches out of him, almost sounding like a laugh, because isn't that just... It's fucked. He looks at James and feels his insides nod up, a deep sweep of pain unfurling through him. He forgave James and didn't even know it. But you didn't, did you? That wasn't... James cuts himself off, gazing at him, pained. That wasn't real. That wasn't true. That wasn't you. However, that sentence ended... It works, and it's not fair. It's not fair that something that brought James such comfort, that helped him get through the arena, wasn't what he thought it was. The worst part is, Sirius thinks he would have said it anyway, if he had been present for the last moments. To give James that comfort, to absolve him, he would have said it. He would have lied, because it is a lie. It's a complex thing, this weird jumble of resentment and relief. Sirius didn't forgive James for choosing to die, and he still doesn't. Even knowing that, originally, it would have meant the loss of Regulus, another thing he couldn't handle or forgive. There's no simple solution to this situation. There never was, and the only thing that fixed it was that he lost neither of them, which is exactly what happened. That doesn't mean it just makes the feeling of anger and hurt go away. They're still there. Sirius thinks they'll always be there, existing in some liminal space where he can simply avoid it, because it didn't happen. He'll never forgive anything that could have ended with losing, losing <laughs> James or Regulus, even them, but he doesn't, he isn't angry with them for it, for the choices they made. He doesn't blame them, because honestly, what's the point? They're here, they're alive and here with him. It didn't happen and Sirius doesn't want to be upset with him about it. He knows better than anyone what being in that arena will push someone to do. It's a strange comfort, but Sirius reminds himself that they wouldn't have done that under any other circumstances. It was never that they wanted to leave him. Sirius knows that. He knows that in a perfect world, neither of them would have ever considered dying. But this isn't a perfect world. Far from it, actually. And now Sirius has to live with the fact that he knows what it's like to lose them both. It was only moments in reality, but he experienced the moments in visceral detail, enough to know he wouldn't have survived it. It doesn't matter, Sirius whispers, squeezing James's hand and taking a deep breath. None of that matters now, James, because it didn't happen. You're here. You're both here. Your forgiveness was one of the things that kept me going, Sirius. James chokes out, his eyes brimming with tears, and it feels like Sirius's chest is caving in. 
to have that comfort ruthlessly taken from him shattered before his eyes by the source by the one person who has never failed to comfort him before it has to be crushing sirius feels like he's being crushed right along with it do you forgive me now james is looking at him like he's desperate like sirius's forgiveness is the only thing he needs and without it he would simply give the fuck up like the guilt would eat him alive so sirius softens as much as he's able to and says of course i do james there's nothing in this world you could ever do that i wouldn't forgive you for james releases a deep gasping breath and starts crying again and sirius shifts up to hold on to him as much as he's able to letting him sag against him and leech comfort from him as much as he needs to sirius finds himself grateful despite everything for lying to james then just so he would be comforted in the arena much the same sirius is grateful for the lie now for the comfort it brings to james because still even now it is a lie he can never fully forgive what would have resulted in having james taken from him but he doesn't have to this is a lie he can live with remus swings his head in perfect sync with pandora when the door opens to the suite and sirius comes shuffling in with regulus right behind him both of them looking exhausted remus isn't sure why exactly but the mere sight of regulus makes him feel a little faint a bit spooked like catching a glimpse of a ghost out of the corner of his eye it's at this moment that he realizes some part of him was still stuck on seeing regulus go into that river not entirely sure he ever came back out until now when he's in front of them he's clearly seen better days that much is for sure regulus has a set of scars down the side of his throat pink lines that disappear underneath the collar of his shirt undeniably from where he was dragged beneath the water if he has more they're not visible because he is in a long sleeve shirt he looks very tense clearly uncomfortable and uneasy sort of hovering next to sirius as he flicks his gaze around the room like he's waiting for something to jump out at him he doesn't speak or meet their eyes or acknowledge them at all sirius murmurs something to him and he nods stiffly before making his way swiftly through the room heading down the hall to presumably go to his room the door shutting quietly sirius watches him go blowing out a deep breath then reaches up to run his hand warily down his face he looks dead on his feet completely depleted of energy and remus's heart clenches violently in his chest i can't stay long sirius mumbles as he moves over to them his tired eyes tugging at remus's heartstrings just can you keep a check on him through the night pandora i don't think he wants to talk really but i'd appreciate if you knock and stick your head in every once in a while yes of course pandora replies immediately is he hungry we can make sandwiches i can bring him one you can try sirius says softly pandora immediately stands up like a woman on a mission heading into the kitchen as sirius steals her seat next to remus he deflates for a moment leaning his head back with his eyes shut a minute later pandora sweeps right back out of the kitchen with a sandwich on a plate going down the hall with a stutter in her stride hi remus whispers when sirius opens his eyes and rolls his head to gaze at him hi sirius whispers back his lips curling faintly only for a moment before flattening out again he studies remus's face for a minute quiet then will you kiss me remus leans over to cradle sirius's cheek granting his request with a tenderness he didn't even know he was capable of it's a soft kiss and sirius sighs into it like he's coming home even though it's not deep or teeming with passion remus feels it hook in his chest and tug at him until he's glowing from the inside out it ends naturally gently their foreheads pressed together as they sit there in silence and breathe i have to go sirius tells him i'm staying the night with james but i'll i'll check in on regulus in the morning so i'll see you then i'm sorry remus i just don't apologize remus cuts in gently it's okay sirius regulus is going to be okay here with pandora and i'll check on him as well before i have to leave for the night you stay with james it's okay everything is going to be okay 
It doesn't feel like it. Sirius admits. Remus tilts his head up to press a kiss to Sirius's forehead, then leans back to hold his gaze. One day at a time, remember? One day at a time, Sirius repeats, blinking slowly, sluggish, sluggishly, like he's too tired to hold his eyes open for long. And yet he still does. He still fights to. Don't forget to take care of yourself in all of this, especially if I can't be here to help, Remus says. Try to get some rest, at the very least. Eat a sandwich before you go. Okay, Sirius replies. As for Regulus, I'm worried about him, Remus. It's not, well, obviously he's not doing well, and I don't expect him to, but I'm still, I'm really worried, Remus fills in, when Sirius can't seem to finish. Sirius swallows. Yeah, really worried. He's alive, Remus reminds him, because saying that has always comforted Sirius. I know you're going to worry, Sirius, but you're doing everything you can. You're taking care of them, and that means something, remember? Thank you, Sirius breathes out, his eyes fluttering shut. When they open back up, he reaches out to gently push Remus's hair to the side, just a bit, grazing his fingers over his forehead. And you? Are you okay, Remus? I'm okay, Remus murmurs. For now, I'm okay. Do you need anything? Sirius asks. Remus quirks a tiny smile. Another kiss, if you're willing. For you, I'm forever willing. Sirius says softly, a light teasing undertone to his words, counteracted by the heavy truth in them. He means that, of course he does. Sirius rocks forward across the small space between them and kisses him again, slow and tender and warm. It's precious, and Remus treasures it, cherishing each moment between them, only more beloved because it's finite. Sirius speaks of forever between them, like it's an option, and Remus can taste it from his mouth, but forever isn't a hope that they'll ever get to have. You're so precious to me. Do you know that? Remus whispers when they break apart. A slightly high-pitched giggle tumbles out of Sirius's mouth, bordering on delirium, likely from the lack of proper rest he's gone without. And despite everything, he blushes that lovely blush of his as he gazes at Remus with fucking stars in his eyes. His giggle rapidly turns into a mildly hysterical bark of laughter as he chokes out. Oh, fuck, that was embarrassing. Humiliating, really, Remus teases, smiling helplessly. Sirius settles down with a gusty exhale, just gazing at him with undeniable affection, even while he still looks so tired. Oh, but Remus loves this man. He really... Oh. Oh, Remus thinks, his heart doing this bittersweet sort of clench and release in his chest as he realizes that it's true. Not just in abstract, not just them heading towards something they can never really have, not just falling in love, but landing. Remus loves Sirius. He loves him. It's already there. It's already happened. It's love. He's in love. Remus swallows harshly and blinks rapidly to fight the stinging in his eyes, and Sirius's eyebrows furrow with obvious concern, clearly about to ask what's wrong. But that's the thing. This is so right. They're so right. And there's nothing wrong with being in love with Sirius at all. It's everything else that's wrong. All those things they can't do anything about. And that's what hurts. He saw this coming, and he's still not prepared for how much it impacts him. Before Sirius can even speak, Remus folds forward, to kiss him one more time, just as slow and gentle and loving as each time before. Sirius melts into it, as he always does, and Remus lets this, all of it with Sirius, curl up safe and warm next to his heart, where he will guard it and keep it, because it's all he gets to have, which is better than having nothing at all. They break apart at the sound of steps approaching, and Pandora returns with an empty plate and a triumphant gleam in her eye. She says, he's eating. Hope looms in Sirius's eyes one more time. 
Remus cherishes that too.